I just, my mic's on. Coming up on this Election Week ATV News. A wood shop near Beaver Dam caught fire. We'll tell you how it started and if anyone got hurt. You know those phishing emails you always get? Someone at Utah State fell for one and lost a lot of money. And riots are erupting in Venezuela. We'll let one of our own tell you what's wrong. Coming up on weather, I'll tell you why this week's forecast looks a lot like a tennis match. Speaking of tennis, I'll show you the controversy at the Weaver match, and USU has two national champions. All this and more on ATV News. Welcome to this week's edition of ATV News. I'm Becky Eisenhower. And I'm David Stewart. The FBI is looking for your help. On November 6th, three meeting houses for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints were vandalized in southern Idaho. The vandals drew obscenities and wrote vulgar words on the buildings and building and landscape. The FBI has announced a reward of up to $5,000 for anyone with information leading to the arrest of these vandals. If you have any information, contact your local FBI offices. Firefighters battled a blaze in Box Elder County Friday afternoon. Our Brandon Fonda is live to show us more. Brandon. That's right, David. Firefighters from five different stations responded to 911 calls about 2 o'clock Friday afternoon at Beaver Dam. Unfortunately, they were unable to save the structure. By the time crews got, th got there, this wood shop was fully engulfed in flames, so their immediate focus was on the shop owner's home, which is right next door. Firefighters sprayed the house with water so that it didn't also catch fire, but as you can see here, some of the siding still melted. The fire started because of an equipment malfunction that sparked. Nobody was inside when the fire started, but the son of the owners was sent to Logan Regional for minor smoke inhalation because he tried putting out the fire before crews arrived. Officials estimate about $100,000 of damage was done to the shop and the house. According to officials, the shop called County Laser was full of birchwood, finish, and propane tanks. All things that are very flammable, making it burn very quickly and tough to stop. It went very quick, so by the time, by the time crews got here, the entire interior was fully involved. I had flames coming out the side. Obviously, our first, first priority because of the damage to the shed already was keeping the house from burning. I spoke with the homeowners and they were very distraught. They said that, that that shed was their sole source of or one of their main sources of income, their livelihood. They were very shaken up but still glad that nobody was seriously injured. Back to you David. Thanks Brandon. A country laser was a laser wood etching business. Money was stolen from two USU professors through an email scam. We went out to discover what you can do to protect yourself. You may not think twice while checking your email, but do you really know what emails you're getting and from who? It was actually a very credible looking message. It claimed to be from USU IT. It had the USU logo. The original phish message was sent to about 100 faculty members at Utah State. It informed them that their email account on file had been listed for suspension and would be disabled shortly if it wasn't activated. The person got a very credible looking message, followed the instructions, saw familiar things, thought everything was okay until payday came and the paycheck wasn't in their bank account. Scammers were able to get their hands on upwards of $15,000 between two USU professors. That doesn't sound like a lot between two, but one of the professors took the bulk of the hit when they took upwards of $12,000 from his banner account. At that point, we recognized that their direct deposit information had been changed back on about the 16th of January. But faculty members aren't the only ones being targeted by these fish scams. If, if any, they ask you to do anything that's related to your personal information or um, your university accounts, grants, etc., students, um, and you're unsure, you know, don't uh, take, don't click on it yourself, call IT. We have a special address for it. It's called FISH, spelled with a P-H, P-H-I-S-H, at usu.edu. 
For more information on how you can protect yourself online, visit it.usu.edu. 13 people are dead and hundreds more are injured or detained in Venezuela as riots entered their third week. After what was supposed to be a peaceful demonstration of students was met with police brutality on February 1st, thousands of Venezuelans gathered in opposition to President Nicolas Maduro's government. The riot has lasted more than two weeks and spread across the country with protesters decrying government corruption and police hostility, as well as economic practices that have led to 59% annual inflation and shortages of food and other necessities. President Maduro has expelled most of the, more of the foreign press, so many details are hard to verify, but Venezuelans in Utah rallied on the steps of the state capitol to bring attention to the situation on Saturday. In Logan, two women are organizing a discussion group to bring attention to the plight of the Venezuelan people. The reaction of the government to peaceful demonstration by students proves they don't have democracy, that they don't have their basic human rights, because people should be able to say what they think without having to pay with their lives. Cordero and Bernal urge you to become educated about the situation through social media and websites like amnestyinternational.com. When we come back, student body elections are heating up at Utah State. We'll show you what topics were discussed. And one group in Logan is helping out a nine-year-old girl in North Carolina. Did you check? You got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Where am I? Are we on this? Welcome back. Editors of the Statesman hosted and moderated a public Q&A style debate for the candidates of the USU Student Association last night. USU, USU USA candidates used this last official public forum of the election season to engage in the usual good-natured ribbing as well as to highlight what makes them different from their competition. I think there's ever been a student who's been on the fee board for three years, so what better impact could I have with student fees, having known the process, having understood the system, in order to change it? Um, I think that the input that we, we really need is fresh input. If all of the people that are currently on student government get re-elected again, that's over 50% of the current voted EC positions. At a university that's going in the right direction, sometimes just a different opinion or sometimes just a different view on things can, can make a difference. And, and that's why I kind of just hope to, to be a representative for the students and what they want to do. So I think that's the biggest thing is experience. The biggest problem with student leadership is the turnover rate. Once they start to trust and respect the student leader, then a new student leader comes in and they start over again, and so they're not able to accomplish a lot with student leaders because of that turnover rate. You can vote until February 27th at vote.usu.edu. When you think of extinction, you might have dinosaurs come to mind, but there are some breeds right here in Utah in danger of dying off forever. ATV's Tamara Bradley shows you what one place is doing to save a species. The June Sucker, a fish native to Utah Lake, was put on the endangered species list in 1986 when there were less than 500 left in the world. Now there's more than 130,000 of these June Suckers in this facility alone. In 1991 we built a small facility here to help USU do some research studies they were doing. The females get an HCG injection to help them produce eggs. They took the eggs from the female and used the milk from the male and fertilized the eggs. Each one of these containers can hold up to 1,800 fish, 
and is labeled with the date and lot number. They may look like just a big bucket of water, but everything about them is regulated, including depth and oxygen levels. Just like you want your bathtub warm, these fish are just as picky about their bathtub temperature. In the past, the fish became stressed and caught diseases from swimming in too cold of water. So why go to all the trouble to save a species? It's important for a variety of reasons. I mean, they have their place in the great scheme of things. They were part of the natural ecosystem here in Utah. The fish reach their full size of 8 inches within a year. Each fish is individually tagged with a magnetized wire by this machine. Researchers can tell the sucker came from the hatchery by running it under a magnet wand after it's been released into Utah Lake. Tamara Bradley, ATV News. The fish take about one year to grow full size before they are released into the wild. Disc golf is a sport you usually see in the summer, but for some locals, bearing the cold didn't seem to matter. ATV's Jill Hodson shows you why people ventured out into the cold. People wore their jackets to stay warm at the disc golf tournament held at the fairgrounds on Saturday. They even stayed through the snowy weather. The tournament wasn't just for fun and games. The event was held to raise money for a nine-year-old girl who needs your help. This is Evie Wentz. She was diagnosed with hemolytic uremic syndrome in December 2012. She was hospitalized at North Carolina Children's Hospital, where she was connected to a hemodialysis machine. While Evie lives in North Carolina, her father, Tyler Wentz, is an Aggie alum. Her father was actually one of the main guys that got disc golf going in Cache Valley. Because I already knew Tyler Wentz, and I knew that his daughter needed a kidney transplant. They were the people who he selected. Evie had to be healthy enough to be considered for a transplant. Her blood tests were clear, and she finally had a kidney transplant last Monday. Five days later, she was able to spend some time with her kidney donor. The disc golf tournament raised about $2,000, which will be donated to the Children's Organ Transplant Association. They're a charity, and so 100% of what they're going to receive does go to the Wentz family. She's in good spirits. She said she's doing great. Jill Hodson, ATV News. If you would like to help Evie, you can go to C-O-T-A for EVW.com. We determined that it, the timing of this dietary intervention... You need to eat your vegetables. They're good for you. We've all heard that saying before, but researchers have found evidence that there may be serious health benefits to eating your veggies. Researchers here at USU are studying how changes in a diet can change your risk for cancer. They found that the chemical endothelial carbonyl, which found it, is found in vegetables, can help reduce the risk of cancer. By examining the intestines of mice who had been exposed to cancer, researchers de determined that the mice who had eaten the chemical during pregnancy showed no, no signs of cancer in their offspring. But the mice without the chemical from the vegetables did show signs of cancer. We determined that it, the timing of this dietary intervention is very important. If you wait and feed the compound just to the offspring, you don't see as strong a beneficial effect. In fact, you really don't see much of an effect at all. Though evidence has shown that chemicals in vegetables can prevent certain cells from turning cancerous, the research is still ongoing. They hope to have more results soon. Coming up after the break, ATV's Misty England will have your Cache Valley weather report. The current weather in Logan is a sunny 48 degrees. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk Need an adventure? The Outdoor Recreation Program at USU offers a wide variety of rental equipment. From winter gear like skis, 
snowshoes, and snowboards to summer must-haves like kayaks, rafts, and camping gear. From sleeping bags to Dutch oven necessities, we have it all. So stop in and see us. Located at 950 East, 1000 North, in the basement of the distribution building behind Romney Stadium, we're open Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So stop in or call to get your gear today. GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Welcome back. So, Misty, what has been going on with our weather? It's so warm outside. Oh my gosh, isn't it so nice out there today? Mm -hmm. So warm, and it's kind of been this way all week. In fact, Monday, the temperature was 57 degrees, and that is the highest recorded temperature for February 24th since oh 1963. So that's pretty cool. Who would have thought that in February we would be having almost 60-degree right? weather? It's early spring. Go ahead and let's take a look outside and see how it looks. So as you can see, it's pretty nice outside. Some people are out on the quad reading their books and just kind of hanging out. So it's pretty nice out there. Let's take a look at our national radar, see how it looks. So on the national radar, as you can see in the Midwest, there's nothing really going on at all. It's pretty clear, no storms coming in. When you get down on this lower eastern coast, you've got some light precipitation, which is the green that you're seeing, and then the blue is the heavier precipitation. So if you're down on that coast and lower part of Texas, they're just kind of getting slammed with the rain right now. Over here on the west coast, it's also pretty clear over there. And then again, you get to the coast of California and you've got that precipitation there again. A little bit heavier on the outside and then as you move in towards California, it's lighter precipitation. Let's go ahead and kick it over to northern Utah. So again, not much going on here. It's really just pretty clear. No storms or anything coming in, nothing moving towards us at all. It, the weather should just be really nice. Let's just go ahead and look at our seven day forecast. So taking a look at today, it's really sunny out there and warm, highs in the 40s, low in the 30s, it's just really nice. But don't get too excited because you're going to have to probably break out your umbrellas tomorrow. There's a 60% chance of rain, high will still be around the 40s, low around the 30s. And then taking a look at Friday, you got the same thing, you're going to kick it back into some sun. And then you're, it'll be a little bit warmer on Friday, getting up into the 50s hopefully. But then look out for the weekend, it's gonna be a rainy weekend. Saturday and Sunday, there's a 40% chance of some rain on the weekend. Sunday's gonna be a little bit colder, getting down into the 20s. And then Monday is warmer, Tuesday back to the rain again. So that's how our weather's looking for this week. It's kind of back and forth, rain yeah. and sun, clouds, no clouds, all over the place. I love it. Let's talk to Mother Nature about making a little nope. more consistent. Leave it alone. I'll see what I can do, okay, just for you thanks. guys. So. Man, that weather is really inconsistent, kind of like Aggie basketball. They're <laughs> way up and down. Um, coming up in sports, I'll show you if the men's basketball team could get out of the Mountain West cellar. And if the gymnastics team felt at home when they took on Denver. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Look at me, hey! Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Welcome to this week's edition of ATV Sports. I'm Jason Borba. We have a lot to talk about on this week's show, so let's get right into the action with some USU basketball. 
It's been a rough season for the Utah State men's basketball team. They have been at the bottom of the Mountain West all year, and things don't seem to be getting better as, as we approach tournament season. The Aggies were looking to end a two-game winless drought when they hosted Fresno State on Saturday. Let's go straight into the second half highlights. The Bulldogs were holding on to a three-point lead, but they would double up the Aggies with this three-pointer by Tyler Johnson with 3.27 to go. He finished with a game-high 21 points. Both teams went on a cold streak, and we wouldn't have another basket until 51 seconds to play, where Jared Shaw gets his shot blocked, but the refs call goaltending. From there, the free throw game was on. Fresno's Paul Watson hits these two free throws to put the Bulldogs back up by six. On the other end, Tanel Roland picks off Cesar Guerrero and finds Spencer Butterfield in the corner for the three ball. The Fresno lead was 77-74 with 18 seconds. USU put them back on the line, and once again, the Bulldogs went two for two to make it a five-point game. Preston Madeline will get a three-point shot off right here, but it just won't fall. Roland is there for the offensive rebound and the deuce, but it's too little too late as the Aggies fall 79-76. It sucks. Uh, we had a lot of close games that we lost this year. Uh, we just got to keep battling. Uh, we can't start out slow like we did, and we, in order for that, we just got to play hard on defense. The Aggies were back in action Tuesday when they took on New Mexico at the pit. Once again, USU came away with a loss and now sit in 10th place in the conference. But if there is a silver lining to all this, it's that the Aggies, well, they just can't get last place. That belongs to San Jose State. Staying inside the spectrum, we tumble over to women's gymnastics where the Utah State Aggies hosted 18th ranked Denver University. This was the second home meet of the year for the USU and their first in nearly a month. The Aggies started things off on the vault, who usually score big in the event, but could only score a 48-475. Denver started off strong on the uneven bars after Mariah Martin scored a 9-9. After three events, Denver led 147-05 to 145-475 with an advantage over the Aggies, leaving USU in just a miracle to win it. Bailey McIntyre scored a a meet high 9-9 on her floor routine, but it wasn't enough as the Aggies stumble against the Pioneers. It was just great to finish. I feel like the girls went out on floor and they did what they do in practice. They're very good at floor. This is the first time that they've actually showed up and did their routines to their fullest. Even though the Aggies lost, they did score a team season high points on the floor routine. USU is in the midst of a four meet homestand and hosts Sacramento State on Friday. It was a busy Saturday for the USU men's tennis team as they hosted a doubleheader at the Sports Academy. First to hit the court was Weaver State, and then they took on Colorado Mesa. The Weaver match as well, they had a little bit of controversy. Halfway through the number one singles match, Jacob Gewert called USU Dennis Baumgartner shot out. Taking a closer look, you can see clearly that the ball lands in bounds. With no line judge, the call stood. Gewart was just too much for the freshman as he won the match 6-4, 5-7, 6-1. In the end, Baumgartner's loss didn't matter as his teammates picked up the slack and USU served their way to a 5-2 win over their in-state rivals. The team, well, they turned right back around and took on Colorado Mesa where the Aggies dominated the court. Here, Dennis Baumgartner keeps the ball going and extends over his opponent for the point. Junior Matt Sweet struggled in his first set. But with Colorado's mistakes and this shot, he comes away with a victory, winning 7-5, 6-1. Blake Demond of Colorado Mesa played in his sweats, but it didn't seem to help him play any better. He took on junior Curran Withmuth, who won the match 6-4, 6-3. USU was also able to sweep the doubles play and brought in a team victory of 6-1 over the Mavericks. Playing a double header is very tough mentally. Uh, you come out here, you know that you're going to be here for around eight hours. And, I mean, I only played doubles in the second match, and just that is tough. The team will try to add to their, to their win streak on Friday when they host former WAC rival the University of Idaho. USU has a national champion, but it's in something you may not know much about, handball. Jonathan Larson won the Division II handball championship over the weekend. Larson, pictured on the left, beat David Bennard on the right. Larson lost the first game of the final, but came back to win in a tiebreaker to seal his first solo championship. Larson also competed in doubles with his partner Ryan Campbell, but they failed to repeat as national champions, falling in the round of 16 to a team from Ireland. Larson said that winning the singles title was very fulfilling for him, especially after being knocked out of the doubles earlier than he expected. And guys, uh, Kenesha Goodworth also won 
a national championship for the women. So we have two national champions here at USU in handball, something we don't know much about. So that's really cool. That's awesome. Go and team. a girl too. A girl, yeah, that's really cool. That's Thanks guys. <laughs> when we come back, we'll show you why these people were marching on the campus at Utah State. And what drew all the Republican bigwigs to the Riverwood Conference Center? Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Stay a safer campus by marching for a cause. Two, four, six, eight! Two, four, six, eight! Two, four, six, eight! These protesters are marching to end date rape and bring awareness to the sexual assault found on college campuses. Complete with signs, the group made their way from the USU library, through the quad, and ended at the student center. The march is just a way to be more in the face of the community with, build, you know, with bulletin boards and with that, just wide open in the face with the statistics and chanting in order to draw the attention that this deserves. Yes, yes, yes. Jordan even leads the group in loud chants to be heard across campus. I do that to open up more people's eyes to make them realize that this is happening. On college campuses, one in four women will be victims of sexual assault. That means as a woman, you increase your chances of rape or sexual assault just by getting an education. According to the National Institute of Justice study, 34% of rapes happened while on campus. I want to be able to know that I can send my kids to college and that they won't be that one in four. And it doesn't just have to be at night. You can contact USU police anytime to escort you across campus or home. Just dial the number. And I know we live in a community where we think we live in Utah, we live in Logan, that this doesn't happen. I can tell you now it does happen, and it is a concern. Two, four, six, eight, four, Ileana Barunda, eight, six, eight, ATV eight, News. For a police escort or any other concerns, contact the campus security at 435-797-1939. Every year we have President's Day to honor all of our U.S. presidents, but on Friday, the Cache County Republican Party had a dinner to honor one president in particular, Abraham Lincoln. More than 350 people filled the Riverwoods Conference Center for the annual Lincoln Day Dinner. The dinner is sponsored by the Lincoln Club and is a fundraiser for the local Republican Party. Several government officials were there and each spoke briefly about Lincoln's ideas of importance of leadership among the officials. Among the officials who spoke were Senator Mike Lee, Congressman Rob Bishop, Attorney General Mark Reyes, and Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox. Each official also encouraged younger people to become more active in politics. We really need to have a younger generation be actively engaged in the process. If we don't have, have that younger generation, who's going to leave this country 10, 20 years from now? Be sure to check in for next... No. Thank you. Something the committee hoped would help attract younger people was the display of various Lincoln artifacts. Some of the artifacts included original books written about Lincoln from the 1800s, framed artwork, and even a marble statue of him. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of ATV News. Be sure to check in for next week's show. Have a great day.